So in this video, we're going to explore an analytical solution to our lifeguard problem. Remember, we have an ocean and a beach with a lifeguard standing on the beach and a swimmer who starts to drown out in the ocean. We need to label a few distances. So we've got the vertical distance from the lifeguard to the shoreline and the vertical distance from the shoreline to the swimmer. And we've got the horizontal distance L between the lifeguard and the swimmer. The lifeguard is going to take a bent trajectory to minimize the amount of time it takes to reach the swimmer. This gives us a couple of right triangles to work with, so we've got a couple of hypotenuses that we need to label. The total amount of time that it takes the lifeguard to reach the swimmer is going to be the beach distance divided by the beach speed plus the ocean distance divided by the ocean speed. Since we're looking to minimize this amount of time by picking the ideal value of x, we need to take the derivative of the total time with respect to x and set it equal to zero. Taking this derivative requires a couple of chain rules and some power rules. The good news is there are a few things in this equation that cancel and we can write it in a little more simplified fashion, but we do end up with one term equal to another that looks a little bit intimidating. It's at this point you might be tempted to work out the algebra to solve for x. This is not a good idea. Instead, we should stop and think. If we go back to the original diagram, we'll see that these fractions we have, although complicated, are pieces from a right triangle. In the first one, x is the opposite side of the right triangle, and the square root is the hypotenuse if we label our angle where the lifeguard starts out. Similarly, if we go to the other right triangle, our L minus X is the opposite side and the square root is the hypotenuse. This means that both sides of the equation involve the sine of an angle and we end up with a much simpler result. So here we are back at our original lifeguard code. This time around, we're going to add some calculations for these angles that we just discovered are important. So let's think about this. We're already calculating a velocity angle here. And this is measured from the x-axis because it's taking the y-coordinate as the opposite side and the x-coordinate as the adjacent side. So the angle that we're interested in from the derivation, the theta b for the beach angle, uh, is just going to be 90 minus this. So let's take 90 minus velocity underscore angle. Actually, we're working in radians, aren't we? So this is going to need to be pi over 2 minus the velocity angle. And then we'll do the same thing down here to get the ocean angle. So we'll go theta underscore O. And we'll have that be, yeah, yep, we're calling it velocity angle there as well. Cool. So then down here at the end of the code, I can have it print both sides of that equation. So the first side is 1 divided by the lifeguard's land speed times the sine of the beach angle theta b and then I just need to do the same thing over here with the ocean side and so I make this the swim speed. Close that off with a parentheses and then I need to increase my rate value here. There we go we're heading toward the transition marker here at 1.55 we're in the ocean going slower there's our minimum time and we end up with a pretty decent match. Um, that agreement, of course, will increase the better we make our estimate of the cutoff point. Currently, we're just 1.55. We probably need a few more decimals on there to make this match better. But we've confirmed our, uh, that our analytical result and our computational result match. And by now, I hope this looks a bit familiar to you. This is exactly the same problem as getting uh, light to refract from one medium to another. When you're going from an area of lower index of refraction, which means the light is traveling faster, to an area of higher index of refraction, meaning the light is traveling slower, you get the same bending property. And in fact, the, the refraction angles are determined by light Light taking the minimum amount of time to go from the starting point to the ending point. And so you do the exact same derivation we had at the beginning of the video, you get the exact same result, which you probably recognized as Snell's law, and you get the same exact match here. So this problem works just as well for light as it does for lifeguards, which is pretty neat. Uh, in the next video, I want to take a look at one more case, which is what happens if this swimmer is drifting away at sea? How do we need to change our path for the lifeguard to keep up? So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.